can uh, make a micro trap and uh, trap within the two hyperfine sta states of lithium. And they can do this very precisely up to one particle and they control it really, really well. And what is more, they can control with Feshbach resonance, they can control the interaction between those particles. On the other hand, we have optical tweezers. We already uh, learned a lot about that in, uh, during this school. So you can really grab a few, few particles and, and, and shuffle them. And uh, it's not only possible to control, uh, to, to measure the spectrum and the single particle density, but recently people uh, also started to measure the correlations. So one of the example is uh, the uh, atomic microscopes. So one can see each atom in the, si in the system, and from that one can get the higher order correlations. And what I'm really interested in is the scenario when instead of having two hyperfine states of uh, a single species which has uh, the same mass, that you would have two different masses, for example, lithium and potassium. And there is an experiment uh, far in the uh, many body regime in Innsbruck by Rudy Grimm. But, and, but seeing what is happening uh, right now, I, I have no doubt that at some point uh, the few body regime in different Im mass imbalance system uh, will be reached. So I model such, such a system with this many body Hamiltonian. So basically I have two different type of uh, particles. I will label them up and down, but this is just a label. Uh, so there is a kinetic part, there is an external uh, harmonic oscillator of the same frequency omega here for simplicity. And those, th the masses can be uh, in, in, in principle different and the fermions of different types interact with uh, delta-like potential. So I, I would like to compare the system with, with, the, with the same masses uh, and the system when the masses are different. So we know from the course of uh, quantum mechanics that if for a given uh, frequency omega, the energy does not depend on the mass of the particles. However, the mass is, is needed to, to build a length scale and the, uh, the wave function depends on the mass of the particles. So comparing lithium and potassium, you can see here the ground, the density of the ground state. So the potassium would be much narrower than, than lithium. And uh, even though the, the, those are the few, uh, f just few uh, particles, however, this is fully quantum, so the, the, the dimensionality of the Hilbert space is, it grows exponentially, so even for four particles of each type, and taking account only t 10 single particle levels, the, the Hamiltonian is pretty big and it grows even more if, if you would like to, to calculate more. So, but playing some numerical tricks, one can solve that. And the first thing you would like to uh, compare is the spectrum. So this is a typical spectrum for equal masses for one up and uh, three uh, down particles. And this spectrum uh, has two features that are very typical. One of them is that in, uh, in strong repulsion limit, there, uh, the <coughs> there is a quasi-degeneracy uh, in, uh, in the eigen, uh, of the eigen energies. And the other is that you can see this, those horizontal lines which are the uh, eigenstates that do, do not depend at all on the contact interaction. I will elaborate on, on, on this a little bit more. And when we uh, introduce the mass imbalance in the system, you can see that, first of all, the, the, the degeneracy is, is partially split, and uh, the, the other feature, this, this so-called Girardot states, are not longer there in the system. So, so the, the spectrum is already changed uh, with this mass imbalance. And this is the single particle density of this so-called Girardot state, which is a totally anti-symmetric wave function of all four particles. So uh, you can see that it looks like it is, as if it would look uh, four, four non-interacting fermions in both densities. However, th this red curve is for, there are just three particles, and here is only j just one. And uh, th this is just the totally anti-symmetric uh, wave function. And th you, th you cannot build such anti totally anti-symmetric wave function if the orbitals of one species are narrower. So this is why there are no Girardot states when we have mass imbalance. However, the, <coughs> the property of this 
mass imbalance system, the general property is that these lowest states, they have al always the uh, sp spatial separation. Uh, so the heavy particles are in the middle and the lighter are pulled apart. Even if I would have three heavy particles, they would be, it does not depend on the number of uh, particles. So it's already, we know that there is a lot of changes and many, many things were done for repulsive interactions. Uh, here in the int unitarity limit, you can uh, apply some spin, mod spin model mappings and so on. There's a lot of tools. However, this attractive case is also quite interesting. However, there are not so many tools. The energy is not bound from below, and so th there are some problems. However, if you think about fermions that attract each other, to your mind uh, immediately comes, uh, for example, nuclei, or uh, condensed matter, matter, uh, matter with uh, Cooper pairing, and so on. So there are many features w which may be interesting from the few body perspective. And I would really like to know what is happening when you change the masses in the system. So this is again the group from Heidelberg. They can, uh, with Feshbach resonance, they, are in, they, they can induce attraction in the system. And here you can s observe the effect that it, it was known for a very, very long time in nuclear physics, uh, namely the even odd effect. S uh, so it means that uh, if you add particle after particle, then you can see that for even number of particles, the energy is smaller. So the system prefers pairing. And this is why some nuclei are more stable than, than the others. And this can be seen also in this atomic uh, counterpart uh, system. And recently, uh, it is also possible to, to measure in, in these few body systems uh, correlations. Uh, here is the correlation in momenta for some uh, double well uh, potential. And so yes, so now I would really like, I would like to see what are the correlations in attractive few fermionic systems in 1D and how the masses will influence it. So this is the two-body correlation in momenta. So for equal masses and uh, in strongly attractive uh, regime. So, <coughs> but, but the point is that if I would have non-interacting system, there also would be some correlation. So I'm not interested in any correlation, but it's some particular one. It's, and so, so now, if you consider the single particle density for for each component, which is the same because the, the, the situation is symmetric, uh, you can produce from the single particle density, if you multiply it, there is some sort of background correlation which we are not interested in because, as I said, even if the particles would not interact, we would also measure them and in non-interacting particles you cannot see Cooper pairing or some other interesting things. So now from, from, the, from this two-body correlations defined as on the previous slide, I would subtract this, uh, this correlation that comes from single particle observables and in result I will get this nice picture in which the momentum of one particle uh, is anti-correlated with the other. So this means that if I have an uh, attracting uh, system and the particles and the pro 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 particles are in such system correlated in in space, they are at the same time anti-correlated in in momenta. So this is for for equal mass. And if I <coughs> increase mass, the, the two things are happening. At first of all, if I introduce attraction the wave function in positions will, uh, will be more narrowed. That means, let's say me that again. If I have different masses, I have heavier particles, they are more localized in the space, so the momenta are broader. So this is this effect that here we see the broadening. But on the other hand, the, uh, the amplitude of this 
of this so-called noise correlation is lower. And if I increase the mass even more, it, the correlations are almost killed, and it is so. So we know that something bad is happening when the mass uh, imbalance is introduced, so, but we would like to have a number to measure it. So a good number is if you square this function and uh, integrate over two momenta. And notice also that here, if I would have no interaction, it would be totally flat, no correlations. So, so this is this definition. And for equal masses, it starts from zero, so everything is all right. It, here is almost linear and, and grows with the, uh, with the attraction. For mass equal to, it's, it's much smaller. And then for three, four, six, it's even smaller. So it, we already see that it mass imbalance kills correlation. And uh, how it exactly behaves with the mass as a function of mass, I would study the slope here when everything is almost linear. In if, if we go close to, to this, uh, to no, no, interac no interaction point. So this is the, the slope in function of the mass ratio. And we can see that this slope is the biggest for almost one. And then it, it is much smaller and about the mass equal to two, the slope is almost the same for if we increase the mass. So are, are there is some sort of critical mass ratio around here that for bigger masses, if you, want, if you would like to have a correlation between the uh, fermions of different masses, if we mix fermions of big mass difference, there will be no correlation a very small cor correlation. So, so, yes, so my take home message is that the correlation noise is a helpful tool. Uh, mass imbalance destroys the correlations in attractive fermionic systems, and the critical mass is around two. If you are more interested, more details are, are here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much to the speaker. We have three minutes for questions now. <laughs>